Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to today's tournament live stream. This is coming from the Blue Tip Bash, and features Kip and Yellowhammer. So this is coming from Group D of the Blue Tip Bash. So this is a two-stage tournament. We have 16 groups, and then the top three finishers from each group after a round-robin format will go through into a best-of-three knockout round. And joining me on commentary for this match, I have got Grubenstein. So how are you doing, Grubenstein? Flan, what is up, my dude? Happy uh, happy June 1st. I don't know. I'm sure that's a holiday somewhere. <laughs> it's a holiday somewhere. It was the, is it the start of... I was, I was going to say it's the start of summer, but I think I'm sort of jumping the gun a little bit there, maybe. Um, it's certainly... It's very, very nice weather where I am, so... Uh, it feels like summer. What is what is what is that about sixty five? <laughs> sixty five and and slightly less overcast. Well, there's a little bit of sun coming through the clouds, so you know you take what you get here. But <laughs> it is fair what enough. It is. Uh, but yeah, we've got a very good match in store today, and I'm looking forward to it. So we have done the coin flip, and we've got Kip who is going to be going first and sending out the invite. So Kip, if you want to go ahead and get the invite sent over so we can get this get started and yeah best of luck to both of our players in this match do it, do it. all right yellow hammer just uh oh well i was gonna say Ooh. they were giving themselves a bit of a confidence boost but they clicked on a loss so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's not a great start yeah and a and a, and a wood duck emoji yes. loss no less yes, absolutely but here we go into the Ooh, game hello martin hello martin and it looked like it was a a pretty decent starting hand i think for for, for kip they did very quickly look away from it which is normally a sign that it's not good uh, <laughs> but no i think i think we've got the bee eater and the the Osprey, which are both good options, and uh, of course, like you say, that uh, that yellow Martin in the in the tray is probably an instant pickup here if you're if you're Kip. Yeah, for sure. And then a couple of nice bonus cards mm. as well. Two of the two of the stronger ones. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's always tricky, I think, when you get two strong bonus cards like that and nothing that meets either of them, because it can be quite tricky to sort of weigh up, you know, your chances of finding birds that are going to meet one of them or the other. And I think. You know, more often than not, you pick one, and then, you know, say he's going to pick uh, Omnivore Expert here, you'll run mm -hmm. into nothing but but falconer birds all throughout the rest of the game. So oh, guaranteed. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's just kind of always how it goes. But um, yeah, it's Mur yeah. Murphy's wingspan. Murphy's Aww. wingspan lot. Yeah, it uh, it seems like the the Omnivore is uh, is the one that he's going for, and I can I can certainly understand that. So. Um, yeah. yeah, and I was I was actually just gonna ask about about the warbler because mm. you look at the look at the first EOR is, exactly. is is filled columns. It's you know it's 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 a cheapy. Um, I think you start with the osprey, the bee eater, and the warbler. Keep a keep a fish and a worm, um, and take the martin. And now see they 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 decline on the mm. osprey, and I'm I'm kind of wondering what's up with that. I mean it's you know it's a it's it's a different food. Right. Um, and uh, and it's you know it's it's one food for five points. Uh, it's mm. gonna gonna help you build out that wetlands. I mean the martin. Ideally, you're looking for. Oh, I'll shut up now. I just noticed the nut hatch <laughs> and the wood duck. We've got a wood duck. We have got a wood duck. So, yeah, probably a more straightforward opening. I think here, if you're yellow hammer, you know you look at the nut hatch and the wood duck. You probably ignore the other three birds and just focus on getting those two down because that is just such a such a powerful start i think being able to get those two in the forest yeah now if i remember the feeder right i don't think there was another seed in the feeder mm. and that does always make it a little bit more tricky um well yeah uh, especially when you yeah when you have to keep uh when you have to keep a second bird you know right. you've got to spend a turn just grabbing a, a food just to, to brute force the wood duck instead of just brute forcing it but nonetheless i mean that the wood duck nut hatch combo you know there's a reason that's so classic i mean you're going to be you know you're going to get what eight ten whatever uh caches on that yeah on that nut hatch over the course of the game so uh you know you you don't really mind that that one extra turn at the beginning no i think you're right i think it's it's manageable and you know i think certainly you know, from my experience i think if you are running wood duck early it can be so difficult to just find 
that second forest bird to play alongside it and for the longest mm -hmm. time you, you're just oh, you're getting that one food and one card and it's really really slow going so to have something like the nut hatch like you say it's going to get so many cached food for all those points at the end of the game but um, just actually having that second forest bird to at least enable that extra food generation at the start it's uh it's so so important so yeah certainly e e an easy pick i think here for the for the starting birds at least yeah, no doubt. Now, now looking at the bonus cards, see, we've I know we've we've had some discussions in the in the chat about about behaviorist and yeah, uh, you know, some people are, are conflicted about it. I think this is a scenario where it actually has has a lot of appeal. I know we've right. talked about where anytime you're going to be investing heavily in one habitat, whether it's a you know big grassland engine, uh, maybe you're going full tuck. Uh, or in this case, you know, you know, you're going to be going to be hammering that that forest. I mean, that's better mm. suited for for that behaviorist. But uh, they uh, they went with the the, the fishery manager, and uh, you know, I'm not I'm not entirely uh, I'm not really sure that's wrong. No, no, I I think you make a really good point about the behaviorist. You know, I think whenever you're filling up one column with a lot of uh, one row, I should say, with a lot of brown powers. Um, as is likely going to be the case here with a with a pretty straightforward forest engine, then you do give yourself a lot of flexibility with filling up the other two rows. And I think, especially with a, with a wood duck engine like this, you're going to be looking for a lot of pink powers that are going to get eggs. You'll look for those white power birds or kind of bonus card birds that are obviously going to score points and get bonus cards. So I think you do have a lot of flexibility in being able to fill up the right columns at the right time with the right power types. Um, but mm -hmm. absolutely, I mean, fishery manager, I can't really blame them for, for going for that either. I think, you know, there's a lot of those big point birds, bonus card birds, again, that meet oh, fishery yeah. manager. And those are exactly the kind of birds that you'll be looking to play when you're running a wood duck engine like this. Sure, sure. Yeah, you're you're looking for those, uh, you know, a lot of those those three food birds uh, and, right. and particularly, you know, you're, you're going to uh, you're going to have some hopefully some some decent options that might even give you more know more bonus cards i mean puff and yep. stork and spoonbill and those exactly. kind of those kind of birds exactly yeah and yep. uh just a, a correction earlier on, mm -hmm. on myself i guess guess there was a seed in the feeder so yep. uh so kudos to to yellow hammer for uh for recognizing that and and gaining the additional uh point from the nut hatch by doing yep. it this way absolutely yeah you know you get you get that extra point and so many times these games come down to a single point, so it can sometimes be those kind of little fine plays like that where, where you just make sure you're maximizing uh, what you're doing to, to be able to, to get all the potential out of it. But yeah, absolutely straightforward. I think there you lay eggs, you get this wood duck down, and that's when you just start running that forest, and hopefully you get either something to add to it in that forest, or you're going to be looking for, like I say, those pink powers or those nice big point birds that, that you can look to play with this kind of engine. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing on, you know, on, on Kip's side, and this is, this is where I think keeping the Osprey would, would have been, uh, much more, uh, advantageous. Just, you know, you look at, it, it's like now you're kind of committed to putting the Martin in wetland and, mm. you know, that's, that's not really ideal, um, you know the Martin. I mean, outside of like a, a full tuck engine, you know the the Martin is just so so powerful in that right. grassland where you can just be mashing your your A button and then you know cycling cards uh, all the while. So uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm kind of wishing that they had uh, they had gone ahead with that Osprey, but uh, mm. I suppose at, at this point, uh, you know, of course you gotta gotta dance with the one you brought to the dance. So. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think certainly the Osprey, I mean, particularly now you kind of look at the, the pretty obvious wood duck forest engine where we know that uh, that Yellowhammer is going to be kind of swimming in food. I think throwing a, a few extra fish here and there is, is not going to add too much to that and certainly is going to help yourself. So, yeah, it's always risky, I think, when you start without that um, wetland bird. But, you know, maybe it might be a case of get the Martin down in the grasslands and, and cycle through that warbler and just hope you find something better. But um, I certainly wouldn't have been opposed to to keeping the osprey at the start. Mm -hmm. Now, are these are they stuck here? I think it might stuck? be. I'm just uh, I was yeah. just checking with the players because I think the I think Kip's stream might have frozen and uh, and it is stuck on their turn. So uh, I'll just make sure that everything is okay with them. But um, yeah, I mean, in the meantime, I guess we'll talk a little bit about the 
the, the tournament. So I know this is one that you're taking part in as well, Groovenstein. So uh, how is it going for you so far? Yeah, I am, and I I actually just finished my uh, just finished my my games. So uh, that was uh, that was the one where you where you asked to see my board because I think oh, I yes. had like you know seventy something uh, seventy something tucks. <laughs> it was a, it was a very uh, very spicy. Yeah. tucking engine involving the uh yeah the, the op pelican so uh yeah anytime so yeah. Uh, any anytime anytime you see a lot of tucks in the in the score when it's submitted i think that always makes uh it makes you curious you know what was the setup there i think particularly with the european expansion we've got obviously there's like the mute swan and the chiff chaff and you kind of look at that and you think that's going to be a chiff chaff game you can kind of sense it as soon as you see the scoreboard there so um yeah, no, that was uh that was a very interesting one to say the least. But here we go. I think we are back. Hopefully. Nice. And uh mm -hmm. yeah, looks like Kip, unsurprising the the bee eater has uh obviously gone down and they managed the legs and uh, I believe they got the worm as well, which is always nice. So um yeah, I imagine that Martin is gonna be added uh alongside it in uh, in that grass and, and I think that's a pretty good start to the to the grasslands it is mainly just about then trying to find that nice wetland bird to, to hopefully add to that hmm. yeah that's interesting because i just i guess i've i've just been assuming that the plan was you know put the put the warbler in the forest the martin in the wetland you've you've got that uh and you know you've you've got that uh that eor you know that that first eor so i i yeah i was i've been guessing that that's what uh that's what kip's going to be doing and it looks like hmm. yeah they uh they are going that route indeed yeah i mean it's it's not bad i certainly i have found in the european expansion that just kind of starting off your wetlands like that with a tucking power you're often going to find more of those like the kind of chiff chaff that we talked about or the mute swan or, or any of the the number of tucking birds that we have in uh, in the base game as well so um yeah it's uh it's not a bad start to the to the wetlands and like i say i think hopefully can add to that and again with this warbler should be winning that first end of round goal which is uh, always nice i think to to get those extra points Ooh, how starling. about that for a draw yeah starling yeah that's first draw you get probably the perfect bird to to add to this kind of forest engine so yeah one of these new european expansion birds you get to to discard extra food at the end of the round and uh, and turn those into tuck cards for points so Certainly, with a wood duck engine, you can often find that you are going to keep a lot of food, uh, certainly at the end of the game, but even in between rounds as well. So, yeah, having the opportunity to turn those into points, that is, is so nice as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, they should be able to get a, a you know, a good 8, 10, mm. uh, or, or even, yeah. even more, depending on, you know, I mean, obviously you need some food to play some birds. Yeah. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that's always a nice, uh, nice pickup early sure. uh this in this kind of setup yeah um, and and how, how how do you feel about this so um you know they kind of went from not really being able to compete for this end of round to potentially you know they've still got a few turns left you could get that mm -hmm. starling down in the in the wetlands and then maybe something like the griffin vulture in uh in the grasslands now obviously at the moment there's no predator powers in play but it is one of those where maybe as the game goes on you might get a few cash food for that and again if it helps tie the the end of round goal or or even win it potentially then you can get a few extra points that way well sure i mean if you if you look at it it, it becomes you know tying that going going from not qualifying to tying mm. that first uh that first end of round is is a four point swing plus exactly. it's a one point bird in its own so that's five points and it costs you no food so it's like you can still uh you know get it, it's not taking points away from you know from the starling or anything mm. so uh, yeah i actually think that griffin vulture is not bad i would uh i would draw one from the deck first just yep. to see what it is because maybe it's a better option um but then uh but yeah i mean if that's if that doesn't you know if what you draw from the deck doesn't doesn't beat the vulture yeah i think you're you're right on go ahead and grab it yeah i think uh i think i think it's certainly feels like a sensible play and again you know the, the vulture's not going to use any food so any of that extra food you do have from the from the wood duck and uh, or the wood duck engine i should say can potentially be turned into points already so um yeah just kind of quickly yeah, going to to what kip's been up to so they drew cards and they tucked the uh, the forest bird they had so um they they obviously picked up the the house finch which is so good and i think certainly 
Um, I would expect that to be going down in the grasses now as you're kind of tucking bird. But um, yeah, a little bit risky, I think, kind of not going for any forest birds. Uh, I'm not sure they can rely on this uh, this bee eater throughout the rest of the game for, for all of their food, but it certainly is a good start. Yeah, well, you know, you know what? Uh, what I might look at if I'm, you know, if I'm Kip is is maybe if they're if they're planning on putting that house finch in the grass and you know you slap that down, and then you can you can tuck and and pick up the flicker maybe, mm. um, and uh, although they're not going to have you know they're not going to have enough turns to. Okay, wait. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone in the forest. The uh, the house finch. So yeah. they've now got they've got tucking options in the wetlands. And the forest, so it's certainly flexible, uh, and obviously it does help for this this first hand of round filling up that first column. But um, yeah, it's it's not a start I've seen very often where you have those two tucking birds and you put <laughs> wow, okay, <laughs> oh my oh god, my. <laughs> all right, I'll shut up put, now. <laughs> yeah, groove put put groove makes a weird laugh on the bingo card. Oh, that's it's, just that's uh... a that's a guaranteed tick off every time if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing no yeah fair enough now i mean you gotta toss you, you yeah gotta toss the chip chaff yeah. yeah that's yeah you're not going to be generating enough cards no to there's no way do anything with that yeah i mean you know that that benelli's eagle we kind of we already know just the pure the pure point bomb that that's going to be later in the game Don't. so yeah, the, Don't the, do it. there's the, so much suspense the chiff chaff the chiff chaff has to go surely Please. surely <laughs> so uh, much so much stress and anxiety right now in the court it, it is yeah. it's it's given it's it's stressing me out yeah well, make the right choice oh, the suspense <laughs> i mean i know what they're you know they're probably thinking okay like can i you know does this have a place in my yeah in my in my forest okay. you know maybe Good. like if i pick up a mockingbird or yeah. something then you know but yeah they ultimately uh came around so yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i think really you know uh, to be honest benelli's eagle can be tricky with a with a wood duck engine because you are obviously only drawing one card a turn so you can right. you can run right. that engine a lot and you're drawing a lot of cards but generally those are cards that, that you're going to want to play um to to score points or to help Again with the engine or maybe with some egg laying so um yeah it can be tricky obviously if they do have some leftovers uh, at the end of the game which can often be the case then then that's where the eagle comes in but um yeah you certainly don't complain i think when you uh when you grab the the benelli's eagle this early in the game no and, and particularly when you think about it they're uh you know the you, you pair the the benelli's with the with the starling and it's like you're you're getting you know that's that it, it may be like you say that that you're only getting you know one card a turn so it, it takes you a few turns to be able to mm. you know to tuck a card under there but in the meantime you're getting a tuck on the nut hatch and you're picking up two pieces of food that you that you don't have to spend on the bird that you can throw on the starling so right right exactly yeah yeah, yeah i think that's that's just so nice you know the the, the kind of the flexibility of of being able to use that starling is is going to be so nice for for, for Yellowhammer throughout this game so um, yeah certainly you know when I think whenever you're setting up an engine you're going to have in mind you know what birds am I looking for so with a wood duck engine you're kind of thinking normally right I want birds to go in the forest like the nuthatch or, or or like the pleated woodpecker or something to, to kind of generate eggs but uh, I think not far down that list is the is birds like the starling and you know we see here they've got all this extra food I wouldn't be surprised if they just chuck all of this down on the Starling now because you know you're going to be getting so much extra food. Oh, I food. would. I, yeah, I'd be putting all five here because you, you've got so much that, that you'll be able to, to get access to uh, you straight away in that in that next round. Yeah, yeah. And, you, you know, each the, the, the thing about these these round end powers that, uh, that take the food, um, you know, it, it can be kind of tough to, mm. to decide, like, do I want to spend this? Do I... But... It, you know, you got to remember, especially in a situation like this, right? As you say, you're going to be able to get tons of food yeah. over the course of the game, and every round end that you pass up, you know, I mean, that's 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 three points left on the table, right? Right there, potentially. Now, it's you know, it's not gonna, it's not like this, 
this food is going to go to waste. I mean, I'm sure they'll find some other ways to use it, but nonetheless, I, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I would have, I would have jumped on grabbing those, grabbing those three points and expecting to be able to, yep. you know, to pick up, pick up food later. I mean, if you take the points and then, you know, you don't take points on a, on a future round cause you want to play a bird. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Like it, it's, you know, but you've, you've, you've left yourself the option of, you know, just, stuffing the the starling full of food like the entire game you know you've still got that option if it makes sense as opposed mm. to you know now you've kind of you've kind of committed to like you know using that food more on on birds or or later so i you know i yeah i'm 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 with you i think i would have just i would have just fat, fattened that bird up <laughs> yeah i think it's one of those where like you say you can you can feel pretty safe in sort of locking those points in now um and yeah you know maybe you get to the end of the second round or the third round and you think oh actually you know i'm a bit low on food or i've got some some real big point birds i want to look to play um that's when you can kind of try and save save the food up a little bit and uh, and hopefully yeah. get those those birds down so no don't don't throw the crossbill man <laughs> i would i would keep the crossbill and chuck the flycatcher yeah that crossbill is going to be gaining you uh, you know again it's the same thing it's like you're gaining additional food to, mm. to put on that starling and yeah it's a little bit annoying to get down um but uh you know but but i think i yeah i think i would have preferred uh keeping the crossbill there mm. yeah i mean the only thing i can kind of think that that maybe is what yellowhammer is planning is is they've got this savannah sparrow and they've got this fly catcher um mm -hmm. you know potentially i think they're looking at the the next two end of round goals both of those nest types match up perfectly with those you know, they need to. Uh, they need to. Yeah. They need to get one of each of those down to at least qualify and get some points. So I yeah, think yeah. you know it's it's a big point play. Um, they've already got the single egg that they saved from earliest. So they can use that. So I think oh. being able to to do that play is going to be so nice. And I'm I I'm looking at the goldfinch. <laughs> I'm looking at the goldfinch, man. What a what a beauty, especially yep. you know with uh, with with Kip having. Right. Uh, tucking birds, you know, all in, those in, tucking birds, yeah, in two habitats, yeah. Yeah, I think I think now is the time you 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 gain food again, and I think you probably swap the flycatcher for the for the goldfinch here. You know, you it, they're they're similar in point value, obviously the, the the goldfinch two less points, but you know, with all these tucking powers, um, you're going to be easily scoring more points than that over the course of the game. So, yeah. oh, for sure, and and it's it's uh you know its nest size is twice as big. It, so. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a pretty straightforward, uh, straightforward pickup there. Again, yeah, it's the bowl nest that they they're looking for potentially for that next end around goal. So, yeah, they can pretty easily do this double play. I think you lay eggs just to at least get something because, again, you know, eggs can often be a problem in a, in a wood duck engine like this. So, I think the sooner yeah. you can at least get that grass and spill out a little bit so that you at least get three eggs instead of just uh, just two, um, that can often save you a little bit of time and, and maybe a turn or two later in the game. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm with them. Chuck, you know, you got to chuck that grackle. Like you're not, you're not going to have enough mm. card generation, Absolutely. especially since, since you know you're going to be spending three cards uh, sure. on that, on that eagle. Yeah, yeah. Chuck that grackle there. Yeah. So just, uh, just taking a look at, uh, at Kip at the moment. So they did grab the the wagtail in the tray, which I know Mother Lug in the chat was, was saying would be a good pickup for them. So, um, yeah, this is again one of these new birds from the expansion. Uh, it lets you play an extra bird at the end of the round as long as you've taken all four of the actions. So play a bird, mm -hmm. gain food, lay eggs, and, and draw cards. And you kind of look at the way their board is set up. You know, they score points and they get resources and potentially card cycle as well in all of the habitats. So I think naturally the way they've set this up anyway is very much geared towards a three habitat uh, game here. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you you you're not really going that much out of your way, I think, to to try and meet the condition for this. And even in the second round, if you're able to get three extra birds played out of it, I think that can be really really strong here for Kip. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I wish I wish I could see. Uh, oh, you can kind of see it. It's like they're off to the left. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that playing uh, playing online wingspan and in, in habitat view violates some kind of international law, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can see those little dots when yes, you're in just about. Yeah, sometimes it depends. Like here in the darker, uh, the darker yeah, yeah, yeah. habitat, it's 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 much easier. But my my, 
Um. <laughs> oh, first first world wingspan problems. First, yeah, first world problems indeed. But yeah, I think they've, so they've already laid eggs. They've already gone for food, uh, gone for cards. Sorry. So they just you, know, you play the wagtail and then you go for food and you're done. So then it is all just about making sure you you've kind of got the right setup. You you've got the birds actually that you want to be playing and scoring points with. That's uh, that's really the goal here. I think. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Mm. So what? I was I was curious what what uh, what we were going to see from Yellowhammer here. So they did very nearly play the goldfinch in the forest, and I think that is probably what their long term plan is going to be. Um, but I think they realised, okay, if I play this goldfinch, that's all of my eggs gone, so I won't be mm -hmm. able to do this double play. And and that's kind of the more time critical thing is is at least getting the sparrow down because um, they don't have any ground nests at the moment. So right. I think it is it is going to be so important to. Yeah, to get this sparrow down, but they're changing their mind again and uh, and mm. going for the goldfish. So I, I'm not entirely sure this is the right play. I think certainly the the sparrow needs to go down, and you know you've not got any eggs. You have to lay eggs, and 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 then you can play it. I mean, they have still got the time. Obviously, they've still got quite a few turns left in uh, in, in this round. And you know, the goldfinch, obviously, with these pink powers, we know as soon as you can get them down, you know, sooner rather than later. You're, you're going to be able to really max out on the points here, but um, potentially might be a bit more difficult to you know, get the other two birds down in the in the grasslands quickly enough. Oh yeah, I think it is. I mean, you think about it. You've got to you've got to lay eggs, uh, and then you know you get the you get mm. the sparrow down. Then you've got to lay eggs again. Yeah. No, that's that's that's, that's the tricky part. Three, that's three turns when you when you could have you know you could have done it in two. Uh, you know, and if you wanted to pick up an extra piece of food with with the right. flycatcher right. and uh, and an extra egg. Um, yeah, I think so. that's that's kind of the critical thing is that you know again at the moment you lay eggs and you get two. I think if you do that double play first and then lay eggs, you get three. So uh, it is only one egg, and you know again it's you say oh it's just one egg, but that can often be the difference. It could it can make the difference in an end of round. Sometimes you just are looking for that one egg to play a bird, so you might save yourself a turn there. And uh, yeah, you know, so many times you're kind of just waiting on that one egg to try and do something, and and it's not there. So I think you you always try and extend that grasslands out, um, kind of as soon as you can. But here we go. When uh, when Barry's golden eye appears, that's uh, that's probably the pink power you're looking for here. Um, obviously, Ooh. the cavity nests are very plentiful at the moment for Yellowhammer. They've got the nuthatch, the wood duck, and even that starling in the in the wetlands. Uh, and it meets the bonus card, of course, as well, the fishery manager. So, yeah, lots of uh, lots of good options here, I think, if you're Yellowhammer. Well, yeah, and at this point, I mean, see, the thing is, they picked up that Dunnock, mm. right? So, are they are they looking to toss the flycatcher now, or are they just are they which which mm. effectively kind of kills them for this this second EOR because yeah. you don't really want to just play the naked sparrow, right? All the, <sighs> so it's tricky. It's tricky at the moment. I think. Uh, yeah, you know, you pick up that Dunnock to play it. It's not going to be a denial. You know, there's no way that's good enough here for Kip with the no. with the pretty obvious forest engine that, that's going on for Yellowhammer. So uh, it's it's it is surprising. I think once you pick up that gold, now you you go from the deck and and, and just hope you draw something bad so that you can discard that and uh, and keep all these other good birds. So yeah, and again, you know, with this golden eye, if they want to get that down, they've got to lay eggs first. So um, this it, the egg struggle. It's hopefully only a short-term problem, and hopefully once that golden eye goes down, that uh, that can help out a little bit. But oh, and you see this? See this? They 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 took the Dunnock and and, and that rule sixteen yeah. <laughs> big time. Like yeah, man. Surely you've got to pick that up, right? If you're if you're Kip, the white stalk is just such a such a powerful bird in the grasslands, especially with a with a food generating bird they've already got. In, uh, oh, yeah. in in the bee eater, so you're getting eggs and cards and food all at the same time, and it yeah, meets I mean, the omnivore up... the omnivore bonus card as well. They've got so that's a couple of extra points. So I I, I think you go for food here and and you get it through the tuck. That's kind of what I'm thinking at least. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I mean, you get the you get the reroll, so you mm. hope you know with with a bit of with a bit of luck, you can you can yep. pick up a fish and yep. uh, slam that down and absolutely. And, and start going and then maybe you know you pick up a uh maybe you pick up a, a hummingbird or some kind of you know some kind of additional uh you know grassland 
food yeah. bird, and then so then you don't even have to go back to your forest. Yep. Just hammer that grassland, but uh, yeah, I, hopefully we see. Uh, hopefully we see, see a fish. Grab. Go for the reroll first. Fishy, there we go. Fishy, fishy, Ta -da. fishy, fishy. Grab the fishy. Yeah. Get the tuck. Yeah, probably time for the gold crest to go. And there we go. White stalk, very, very nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, we 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 talked about this with the with the players just before the game starts. I mean, so many times uh, I've seen. I feel like it's happening more and more with the expansion. Is that you know one bird can kind of appear and, and change your fortunes and and we kind of saw it a little bit yellow hammer that that golden eye came up and you're thinking yeah that's probably the the dream bird almost that they're looking for here and then again with kip that white stalk just kind of fits so perfectly in uh in their grasslands and with their bonus card so yeah such a such a powerful bird big points strong power uh get that done in the grasslands and, and you feel very safe yeah, and a, and a lot of times, you know, you're, one of your one of your concerns with with relying on the, you know, the wood stork, as opposed to say the, you know, the Franklin's goal, right? Is is you, you always it, it's a little more delicate to manage your egg space, mm. right? Because the the wood stork, I mean, yeah, its nest size is the same as as the goal, right? It's only the two eggs, but with the wood stork or the wood stork, the white stork, you're not you're not spending those right. eggs, and so it's it's. You know, much more of a challenge to manage your egg space. But Kip's got the house Finch. They've got, I mean, th that really shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be much of an issue for them. So, uh, so yeah, I think you get this. You get this white stork down. Uh, you know, you, you lay eggs. You you gain some food, and uh, yeah, man, you just start uh, start seeing what you can pull. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you're certainly right. I've uh, I've had a few games with the with the white stalk where if you get it too early, it can be so tricky to work with because you, the egg space is just really really difficult. But um, yeah, I mean Kip's kind of got that to the advantage. Like you say, the the house finch plenty of space there, so not a problem at all. But uh, looks like they're going Dick Sissel first now. That is an interesting one. I think that's always a tricky bird to make work if you don't have amazing card generation. So. It makes me kind of wonder: Is this white stalk? Is it going to go in the in the grasslands, or is it going to go in the wetlands where they can maybe get a few more cards generated there before before going back to the grasslands? Well, I think what uh, Kip is is and and rightly so, I think looking at that, uh, you know, looking at that mm. EOR, right? Because yeah. Kip doesn't have a, a ground nest bird either. Yeah. So you get that Dick Sissel down. You know, you lay eggs. That's that's going to be five points in a food. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, then, okay, you've got to go back to the, to the forest one more time before you can, you can get the stork down. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with, with, uh, Kip on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think particularly, uh, yeah, go on. Oh, sorry, mate. I was just going to say particularly, you know, if you're talking, if, uh, you know, a, a five point swing because mm. right now neither of them's got a ground nest bird down. So ordinarily, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, between losing or, or winning, a you know, an end of round goal or losing or tying, I mean, an end of round goal is three points, but, but yeah. here you're looking at five. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have just briefly, uh, lost Kip's perspective. So we'll try and get up as soon as possible, but, um, I was about to talk about Yellowhammer anyway, so I can focus on them. I think they've just kind of realized the problem they've run into, which mm -hmm. is not having eggs. So they were going to go and try and do this Savannah Sparrow, and I think the Flycatcher as well, because they have just got the food for that. Um, they play the Sparrow, try to play the Flycatcher, and then you get that dreaded warning message of not having yep. any eggs. So uh, a bit, bit of a tricky one, and uh, yeah, not something you want to run into, but... Again, it's one of those where you, 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 you could have seen that coming. You could have kind of planned ahead a little bit, thought about your egg space, thought about um, you know prioritizing maybe getting those grasses down a little bit earlier. So it's unfortunate, and I think it is going to mean uh, they will miss out on that end of round goal and, and, and lose a few points, which, yeah, you, you never want to be in that sort of position. No, and I mean, you know, we've all done it. Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, just had that, had that, that egg... Uh brain fart but yeah it's uh they're they're definitely uh definitely some some what if some some self-kicking going yes. on yeah absolutely and like you say it's 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 an easy mistake to make it's it's one 
that we all make from time to time. And uh, I think you've just got to kind of move on and, 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 and try and forget that it ever happened. I mean, really, I think the priority has to be to, to try and get this this pink power down, the uh, the golden eye. And again, whatever they're going to do, they're going to have to lay eggs at some point. So I think probably, I think they just have to try and lay eggs now and, and get this pink power down because eggs is always going to be a problem. And the sooner they can start generating a few eggs and uh, and helping themselves just with playing birds, um, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna pay dividends easily as the as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think what they're what they're thinking about now is is it worth it just to play mm. you know just to play the naked sparrow right? You're gonna get yeah. okay, you'll get you'll get two points oh. from that. And then when you go to lay eggs, uh, you know, that's, uh, let's say they, they spend a food to, to get an additional egg. Um, I mean, it's an eight point turn. So mm -hmm. 10 point, uh, you know, 10 point sequence of two turns overall versus right. versus what they could have done. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a tricky one. I think if, if they, if they can tie, which I think, uh, I think, Kip does only have one ground nest as well, just getting those extra points. You probably can make a case for it, and and obviously being able to lay eggs here, I'd imagine that that they are going to chuck away a food just to at least get that extra egg and, and help a little bit with getting some of these down. But yeah, certainly uh, naked sparrow, as you put it, uh, not <laughs> not something you see too often in uh, in this game. So it is going to look a little bit odd, but um, I think certainly it makes sense in in this situation. Whoa, 88 eggs. <laughs> did, did, did you see that when, when Kip was was logging in there? 88 eggs and 99 wheat. Wow. That should set you up I nicely. Got, yeah. I got I got 99 food and a seed ain't one. <laughs> well, seed was one, actually. <laughs> the seed was 99 of them. Yeah. Very yeah. good. And I guess in... Uh, you know, it does it does help kind of soothe the burn for Yellowhammer a little bit that mm. uh, the last uh, the last eel. I mean, the sparrow does qualify for that last True. eel as well. So yeah, when you put it like that, it's uh, it, it, it you might be able to make more of a case for it. But yeah, um, yeah, I think here for Kip, unsurprisingly, they 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 laid the eggs and got rid of the uh, the chimney swift. So um, got the worm as well from the bee eater. So I think they'll probably try and. Uh, I'd imagine use that to, uh, you know, get the get the food for the white stalk, and then I, I'm very interested to see where this goes. Is it, is it going to be a wetland play, or is it going to be a grassland play? Because uh, obviously, if they put it in the grasslands, you, you get the card from the white stalk, but then the assumption is you're going to tuck it straight away under uh, under that under that dick sizzle. So um, obviously, well, you're I not think... you're not generating anything for, for for you to be able to play there. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's still, you know, one of the things that I think we we really see, uh, you know, more in 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 this European expansion is kind of the uh, you know the, the the partial power or sometimes mm. a power like you know with the uh, <laughs> with the the egg cannon, yes. which is absolutely my favorite name for a bird <laughs> ever. Thank you, Elsie. Um, you know, with the egg cannon, that that partridge, right where. You know, you don't have to get three eggs, you know, three eggs in a column from it every single time right. for it to be useful. Yeah. Um, and and so you know maybe similarly, like if it if it makes sense for the stork to to go in the grassland, I mean you don't necessarily have to tuck the bird every time. You know, it's like let's say over the course of the game you get another uh, maybe three or four tucks, mm. right? Like maybe maybe it 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 still makes sense that way. Um, yeah. No, I think you're right. I think it is one of those where, you know, whenever you play a bird power, you feel like you kind of have to use it every time to to make the most out of it. But um, I, cer I, I certainly can't disagree with you. You know, if you if you if you get the occasional tuck and an egg, and certainly later in the game, perhaps when you have drawn a lot of birds and, and maybe you've got some extra ones that you that you aren't looking to play and you want to instead tuck and, and get points for that, then um, it is uh, is certainly a nice option to have. Now there's a, f a really nice bird in that tray for uh, for Yellowhammer there. That, mm. that my my bestie, <laughs> your the, bestie, uh, my bestie, the common golden eye. And as <laughs> as 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 you told me once when 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 we were chatting about it, you say you know you don't you don't pick your your favorite bird. Your favorite bird picks you. Yeah. 
And so, uh, yeah, the common <laughs> golden eye is gonna gonna get him the the minimum on that that fishery bonus, and yep. they've got. Uh, I mean, they've already got. I think the maximum. I think they've got. They would have four uh, four other nest mm. birds as well with the starling, the nuthatch, the wood duck, and the golden eye. So, yep. uh, so yeah, that's a solid uh, solid pickup for them. Yeah, and saves them from having to you know go to their go to their grassland or rely on uh, rely on kip for for extra eggs. Yeah, and I think that's that's so important. Um, like you say, just being able to to generate eggs from somewhere and. I think even now, you know, only two end of rounds left, so only two opportunities to activate. I think you can still make a case for it. Um, it's still going to score points, like you say. It helps with the fishery manager, the bonus card, um, and I think as well, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they get this down in the forest. You know, that third forest bird or the fourth forest bird, I should say, just pushes them out to to the three food generation. And uh, you know, again, they're going to look to play some big point birds. They've already got a few in their in their hands that are obviously going to eat lots of food. So they'll need lots of food for that, but then obviously the starling as well can can make use of any leftovers. But um, they might not get a chance at taking that golden eye. Because, yeah, uh, I uh, quite sensibly I think like... Kip has gone for the denial there. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> look at all this. Uh, look at all this omnivore action. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously the goal goes down. That's kind of perfect with the with the Dick Sussel now. That looks like a genius play. Um, uh -huh. But uh, I mean, you probably still play the the white stalk, right? Just purely for the for the points, if nothing else. I mean, we talked about it earlier. It's eight points. Works with the omnivore bonus card for another two. So uh, even if you kind of don't need the extra card generation, just the the pure point bomb that that is kind of makes it very difficult to to resist playing that. Oh sure, and I, I think that that extra card may, may actually come in handy. I mean, you think you know they're they're probably going to go to their forest again. Mm. once or twice right so yep. um you know having that extra card to to throw away if they want mm. to and and gain an extra food uh or just be able to tuck it under the the house finch i mean yep. i yeah i think that's uh that still makes a lot of sense for them uh and it you know in addition to the reason that you mentioned yeah. yeah no no good point i think uh you know food food has always kind of been a bit of a struggle for kip um i know mother love made this point in the in the chat earlier in the game, you know, still with just that house finch um, is a little bit difficult for them, I think, being able to, to generate food. The bee eater's been nice, been getting a few worms from that, so you always take that. Um, but, but yeah, just kind of struggling a little bit for that extra food generation now. I think there were a couple of options in the tray that I saw, so um, there's the tree sparrow, which against a, a wood duck engine is, is very, very strong that pink power mm. um but even the red star i think potentially could be useful now that junko would have been nice um if, oh, if kip had managed yeah. to get their hands on that um but uh yeah i'm kind of a little bit surprised maybe that yellow hammer's not um uh, stopped stopped kip from from grabbing either of those two birds maybe the tree sparrow is a little bit late but i think certainly that that red star i mean it helps the end of round as well so um potentially might be might be something that they still look at here yeah that's too bad for uh for Yellowhammer, they weren't able to make uh, get a get a seed out of the feeder. Mm. I mean, they've got to be looking to get that that golden eye down I think as quickly so. as they can. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we made the point with the with the goldfinch when they played that. I mean, these pink powers, they're just so strong, and the earlier you can get them down, the better they are. You know, you're going to get more activations. I mean, we've already seen four tuck cards on that goldfinch. I think even if uh, even if Yellowhammer can only get you know, maybe maybe four or five eggs from this uh, this golden eye. You you take that every day um, for, oh, the, sure. for the rest of the game, and and you know every turn that you can get an egg from that is potentially one turn that you've saved having to lay eggs yourself. And if you can use those turns instead, you know, playing big point birds that they've already got in their hand and just scoring points that way, um, that I think that's always preferable in this position. Oh yeah, yeah yeah, and you know just gaining that that additional food to you know to go on the starling and everything yeah it's uh yeah yeah what what you said <laughs> absolutely so yeah i mean here we go i think for for kip it's kind of a little bit straightforward at least for the for the next couple of turns just kind of run this uh run this grasslands get some some cards some tuck cards and eggs obviously and uh and really just kind of hope that you can get the worms that you're looking for from uh from the bee eater um you know i kind of wondered they've had this wagtail for a little while now in their hands 
And again, it's one of those birds where you want to get it down early. And uh, I think Mother Love already thought he, they had played it, so I was confused why it didn't get used at the end of the second round. But it is still there. Now it's kind of getting to the point where it's probably too late to make use of it. Um, well, if, yeah, if, if, I mean, if I'm, you're going to be completely honest. Yeah, if you're if you're looking at the you know just relying on the goal for your card draw, um, you know you you're using your grassland, you're using your forest. You don't really have much of a reason to use your wetland. So yeah. I think when you consider that, plus you know the fact that it's it's only you know two points for yeah. for two two food, and as you say, you know you you're only going to have two more opportunities to use it. It mm. kind of feels like that uh, that ship has sailed. Yeah, I think so. I think I think there are. There are kind of better options. I mean, they've already got, uh, obviously, that white stalk that uh, that they're probably going to try and get down. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, as we've kind of said, it's it's all about the food and it's about, okay, you know, one of the most difficult things, I think, in Wingspan is, is kind of knowing when it's too late to do something or when you should, mm -hmm. you know, just, just stick with what you've got and, uh, and make the most of that, you know. And I think this is kind of a, a prime example of this here. You know, is it too late to add that food generated bird in the in the forest to at least help you get a bit more or, or or do you kind of stick with what you've got just kind of chuck those extra cards away and 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 stick with the two food i mean it's it's always such a difficult decision to make yeah yeah i'm, I'm looking uh, are they gonna discard your, oh, your boy no. there <laughs> oh. i think so i think so oh. sad bye 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 birdie big sad but it's probably the right choice in this position to be honest um yeah i mean they i don't know they've they've, they've got that gray lag goose that they picked up a couple of uh, a couple of turns back i was a bit confused when they grabbed it um obviously it is a you know seven points it's a relatively big point bird and it's a, its own right so you know point scoring wise it, it's not bad but um yeah these kind of these teal powers the the count double for the end of round goals generally not uh not very well favored so uh, it's not Every day you kind of see someone grab that with intent from the the tray. You know, normally you get stuck with it from the deck and kind of grow <laughs> to yourself that that the wingspan gods have been unkind. Yeah, and you've and you've you've got to remember too with the, you know, with the starling, right? Like mm. every every piece of food yeah. now now yeah. is a, is a real opportunity cost. Yeah. You know, so now you're paying paying three food for for only seven points and and nothing else i mean it's it's really essentially you think about it in a way only a four point bird and mm. after you after you net out the egg a three point bird well now it's yep. a lot less appealing in it yeah yeah and uh certainly you know better opportunities for points i think like we've kind of said before this uh this golden eye obviously the benelli's eagle uh, i am hoping that can go down at some point at least uh, at least with some tucks under it even if they maybe don't end up with enough cards to to really max the use out of it but um, yeah, I think you know really that they are just looking for those big point birds, um, and I, I think they're still hoping for this this fourth forest bird. Um, you know, again, like we said, the the extra food is going to be nice, helps get these birds down. But but any spares, again, that starling is 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 going to be very happy to see those. Finally, the here we go. Right. Excellent. Yeah. I think it's I think it's still early enough. I think they could still get good usage out of this, and particularly when you. You know, when you look at your opponent's grasses with the gull and the and the, and the tucking birds and the food generating, you know they're going to be hammering that as as much as possible throughout the rest of this game. Yeah. Now, what is does uh, does Yellowhammer have any bull nest eggs down right now? Oh, uh, mm, yes, they do. Yeah, they yeah. Have, they have two on the finch. Okay, yep. so so they may be looking at uh, you know, getting that getting that golden eye down serves another purpose, which is once they once they get an extra egg. Uh, you know that can that can help them get another bird right, down right. with you know while still qualifying for that uh, that end around. So yeah, I think uh, I think qualifying is the is the target here. You know they're not really going to be able to compete. Um, just even you know in terms of their own space, they're they're not quite there in terms of what Kipper's got with the see the house finch and the and the gull as well. Um, but yeah, you know they don't really want to be laying eggs at this point. Um, it's certainly not going to be scoring as many points as going for the food and, and trying to get some of these the, these nice big point birds they've got down yeah and that, yeah i think the house finch has already is already yeah, full so there you go that's don't uh, even that's enough to win it for you i think 
Yeah, it's like the, like the song says, "Don't don't go chasing waterfalls." I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that's at all relevant. But uh, don't go don't go chasing waterfowl. We Singular. S- yeah. Stick to the stick to the land based chicken you're used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was. If I saw that right, that's that about, was that's that about was, a, that's about all the response that deserved. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I, I, was, I was I was more trying to make sense of, uh, of of what Kip just did. So I think they went for food, but they only took one food, um, and they didn't even use the tuck. So they, I think they might have just taken a, a seed from the bird feeder. So whether this they're going to try and get this gallinule down, uh, I think I'm wondering if it's going to be wagtail and gallinule because they've got the food for that. They have kind of maybe strategically used all of the all of the habitats, but Again, I think mm. I think I think we already said, and, and it's been pointed out in the chat. It is kind of late for the wagtail, and with this wetlands, you know, I can't really see them activating that in the final round. Um, and, and and that final round in particular is just so difficult to really maximise on the on a bird like the wagtail because you only have five turns, and four of them have to be one of each of the actions. And so you only actually give right. yourself one extra turn for doing something. Um, and especially with the grasslands like like what Kip has got set up, you want to be hammering that as much as possible. Oh yeah, to, to score points that way. Yeah, you mash the grasslands button. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, some nice pickups there, I think for for Yellowhammer. Certainly, the the snowy owl I think is a good one for them. They've already got the food ready for that. So um, this is uh, this is one of those new European expansion bonus card giving birds. So you get one bonus card. And then you get to choose whether you want to take a, a card or whether you want to take an egg. So um, I think that's really nice for, for Yellowhammer, particularly with the kind of egg situation at the moment. Obviously, the golden eye is, is hopefully going to help them a little bit. But you know, just being able to get an extra egg when you play a bird like the snowy owl is uh, is certainly a very nice option to have, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. You know, one of the drawbacks, of course, of it is that is that it's it's not a you, know, you don't get a choice on the bonus cards. It's just here. Here you go. Yeah, um, yeah, that is certainly going, a weakness, I think. But um, you know, if you if you get lucky, you get the nice bonus card. Then then you're happy, and you and you you go with it. But certainly, if you draw a blank and you're stuck with it, that's not a nice feeling. You know, it just it just occurred to me with all this this habitat view. I I hope the people who uh, and and I don't say this in a you know in a in a derogatory or, or critical way because of course they were raising legitimate points. But I I hope the people who were uh, making points about the the two uh the two screens being difficult to to follow mm. uh they they this must be like their personal hell because i hate it and uh i don't yeah. find the two screens difficult to follow yeah. but this this habitat view man yeah i think it is uh it is a bit more tricky i think i i was used to playing i guess the physical game before this and you very clearly have your board laid out and you have other players boards and you can very easily see everything at once and i think um, certainly a wingspan when you're trying to make the right decision you need to be able to see everything so you can see all of your options and yeah having to flick back and forth um i find it quite difficult to 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 make that work and really yeah you know find um you know what you're what you're looking for when it's not all all, all shown for you but again you know it's 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 player's choice and you kind of you go what you're oh, comfortable with so yeah. um, if you're more comfortable using uh, the habitat view then then go with that you know you, i wouldn't want to you know have someone be put off because they're they're forced to use a view they're not comfortable with no 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 of course not speaking of the physical game did you end up going to that uh in-person tournament ah or well it, ha- it has it has not happened yet it's uh it's this weekend so ah. uh yeah i'm very excited for that um nice. gotta 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 do the tournaments discord proud you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Show us up in in real life and not just in the. In now the wait, I thought world. I thought in I thought in weekend you you put the accent on the second syllable. What happened there? How did I say it? You well, you said it like I would say it. You said weekend. weekend. I thought I thought you I thought you you know you guys would say weekend. Like isn't that a? No, I. I hmm. Now I'm starting to doubt myself <laughs> whether I say it right. I <laughs> I I always say weekend. I don't. I wouldn't oh, say okay. weekend. Huh. <laughs> the I wonder if that's, that's got to be like a dialect or something. I mean, I don't. You would know better than I would. I would hope it's so. Your, <laughs> it's, it's, it's your language. It's my language. I take I take full ownership of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Kip, buddy. Yeah, we lost Kip again. So, 
Uh, we're just going to have to guess, I think, what Kip is doing um, based on, on what they had set up. So I think if I saw it right before we lost them, I think they did play the Wagtail at the at the end of that last round. So I'm imagining it was Wagtail and then use that to get um, the, the Galenial down. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be tricky to make that work in this final round. Like we said before, it's it's a very specific use case to to hit all of those actions to to be able to use it. Um, but yeah, I mean they they need to find the birds as well because I think those are the last two birds in their hands. So uh, if they can find something good and are able to get the food to play that, then I'm all for it. But well, um, do they they still have the white stork? Uh. Oh, I hope so. I mean, right, right yeah. now they're at a serious disadvantage because they don't have anything. Yeah, <laughs> at least, at least as far as what we can see, Kip, Kip's yeah. uh, got a significant, uh, <laughs> significant disadvantage with with no board at all. Yeah, yeah. I think. Good luck, mate. I think I think you might be right. I think they do. I'd I'd hope they still kept the the white stock because you know even just for the point value that's. Um, that's worth playing um but yeah i mean we did see there they, they did go for cards so um obviously that's that's given yellow hammer a card and a tucked card behind the goldfinch so um, they will be right. very happy with that and yeah i mean i think for them the priority is is probably just to to try and get some more of these birds down so i think uh i think certainly that snowy owl i'd be looking at that obviously helps with this end of round goal potentially as well although i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not sure kip has any no power birds down so um they they're probably pretty safe in that respect obviously the this Spinelli's eagle um should probably be going down at some point as well but um yeah i think you know you, you try and get some of these birds down um and like we said before any extra food it's not going to go to waste uh, that's all going to get turned into tuck cards as well with that starling so uh, i think even if you do have to spend that one extra turn uh going for food here it, uh, it's certainly not going to be wasteful from a from a point scoring perspective. Sure, yeah, and if, if right now, if their if their plan is, uh, you know, to play the owl, to play the Benellis, uh, and then, you know, go for go for food, uh, one extra time, uh, you know, they're they're already set on cards. Uh, yeah, you know they've they've got enough cards to to do that, so they're you know because they're already they're already plus one on that. So, uh, so yeah, yep. And we they're, have they're... Uh, we've got the Thekla's Lark, the Kip. So I'm sure we're going to see that played, right? Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Everyone's everyone's second favorite Lark. I'm going to say. I hope that's not too controversial. Dude, there was there was a game. I mean, that's granted, that's a low bar, um, but <laughs> everyone's second favorite lark. There's two larks. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Um, no, there was actually a game uh, that I that I played sometime recently where uh, where I I was actually legit disappointed that I did not have space to play the lark because I could have used it a couple mm. times and it would have you no, know, it probably would have been the most it's ever been used. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think the only time I've considered playing it was running a forest engine. So I think it, you know, in a similar setup to to what Yellowhammer's got going, where you're kind of generating mostly food and 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 cards, but not really so much in the points department. And I think being able to to have something like the lark, you know, you've got loads of food, you've got all those extra seeds that you're gaining from the from the bird feeder. I think when you do mm -hmm. go and lay eggs, if you are able to get, you know, maybe four or five eggs instead of just two or three. Uh, again, comes back to points we made earlier. That can that could be so useful and just maybe uh, you know save you that extra turn or maybe allow you to get get one of those birds down that that one turn sooner. And uh, yeah, that can be so important. I think. Yeah, I think in my scenario it was uh, it, it, I had a you know I kind of had a, a strong grassland going that that involved the raven. And you know the yes. thing is right, yeah. you can you with the raven's going to allow you to get the extra food you need to to get those two eggs and then it also allows you to spend one of the eggs mm. um so it's that's kind of a, a nice uh and you know that's that's uh there <laughs> i mean it's it's that's lipstick on the pig but uh <laughs> but it it nonetheless is is lipstick yeah is, yeah lipstick is lipstick at the end of the day yeah. so <laughs> Sorry, deep deep thoughts deep by thoughts. my plan. absolutely yeah. yeah 
but uh yeah there we go finally this this benelli's eagle that was that was drawn i think maybe like turn four or five um mm -hmm. obviously we we kind of knew it wasn't going to go down until later in the game but here we go uh, final round big points that's kind of what you want to see and uh yeah i mean i guess probably for for yellow hammer i think they could be happy with that and then it's just about what they work out to do with their final two turns obviously they've got this snowy owl they've got potentially this uh this blue winged warbler as well um but it does kind of come back to a point you made earlier about every food that you've got now is 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 valued at a point so if you kind of spend too much of your food that you then can't turn into tuck cards using the using the starling then uh, you are potentially missing out on points there but uh, perhaps they might just be going for eggs here taking the points they can get and uh and yeah leaving themselves with those five food at the end to, to get the tucks with the starling uh yeah it could be i mean you've got let's see it's you know you put the owl down i mean because they've already got four grassland birds right so mm. yeah you know the owl is it's a it's a two point play plus a single draw bonus card which yeah. is you know you probably it's a value that at yeah. maybe two points on average say yeah. uh and even the warbler is you know six points but you give up uh you give up two that you're going to get from the starling actually you give up three because you don't have yeah uh, another another grub so that's only five or so uh yeah, I don't know. This is this is check off the the commentator does math. Why does it seem like the when the commentator does does math, it's like always in round four. <laughs> well, that's the time when um, you're trying to do it. That's that's the most critical time to try and um, work work everything out. So um, I'm gonna start doing math. Our, you know, our next time because I know we've got a we've got another game uh, we later, indeed, later yes. today here in a few hours. I'm I'm gonna do some math in the first round just to, just to <laughs> piss everybody off. Yeah, I mean, there's there's early and then there's round one. I mean, I think you know there are, there are some games. Um, I know there was a game where where Chop was playing, and I think he had Gull Raven by like turn two mm -hmm. of round two, and I was like, he's going to score 120 points easily. Like, I think there's situations like that where you can you can pretty easily um, try try and call a game. But yeah, round one, round one's bold. So um, I'll hold you to that later. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll see how close you can get. But here we go. We have Yellowhammer yeah. gambling, and that is the risk you take. That is the risk you take. You know, I, so many times late in the game, even drawing two bonus cards and, and keeping one, you can often find that you're drawing two blanks. And uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not nice to see. But yeah, obviously, when you only give yourself one bonus card to see, it's uh, it's it's even more kind of gut wrenching to uh to have that at this point of the game but um i think we need a we need another another math series <laughs> and drawing drawing one bonus card the the level of gut wrenching yes drawing one bonus card versus two i need graphs i need <laughs> i need maths you need diagrams need of coding. diagrams of guts being wrenched maybe if that would help yeah <laughs> i need bots flan's gut bot <laughs> i'll work on it <laughs> I'll work on it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Any time. Got that win. Any time. But yeah, here we go. Final turn, and uh, and and Kip. I think they did manage to to use all the actions here. So this white stalk. I mean, it's a really nice play to be able to get with this wagtail. I mean, it, it, it is always a question with this last round when you are having a wagtail. Is kind of could I have maybe scored more points if I just focused on the grassland or just focused on playing birds? rather than kind of force myself to go through all yeah. of the other actions. And, and it is always such a tricky calculation to make, but um, it's very satisfying, I think, to, to make this work. And yeah, I think that's, what, three three on the four birds they've got down. So I think six points is, is pretty respectable for that bonus card. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. You I mean, any, six points on any bonus card, Absolutely. I think, is... is... Yeah. Uh, you, you always got to be happy with that. Sure. See, I don't have these animations on in my game. I, I find them, I find <laughs> them obnoxious. But like when I see the Benelli Z, I was like trying to eat something. I don't. It's very badass. <laughs> yeah. It is very nice. But um, yeah, there we go. All end right. of end of round powers have been activated, and we are into the scores. So uh, I think just from the few sort of sneak peeks we got, I think it does look like Yellow Hammer is probably going to take this. But it is pretty level there after. Birds of bonus cards and end of round, so it is going to come down to this kind of cached food. But obviously, we know through that nut hatch 
and all these tuck cards as well from the Starling. So there we go. We do have a win for Yellowhammer, who takes it 98 to 82. And uh -huh. it's a very strong score. So very, very well played. And I think they did kind of show off the the strength of that Wood Duck and, uh, and being able to get those big point birds and obviously the Starling as well with, uh, with a few extra tuck cards is always nice. So yeah, very, very good game. Well done. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yes, I will just quickly take both of our players off Deafen and we will get yeah, them in like... for a very brief uh, post game uh, chat. Assuming Kip isn't stuck in a time I th loop. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think he's back with us. I think we should be okay. But I will first go to uh, Yellowhammer, who is our victor today. So, congratulations. Uh, I think you really showed off the, the strength of that wood duck. So, um, yeah, how was that game from your perspective? Well, I was a little bit nervous mm -hmm. uh, because of the wood duck. Yeah. Uh, especially, I I draw a lot of good cards, um, but with the wood duck, I was uh, not really keen on uh, developing a wetland, um, strong wetland. But then I was struggling. Okay, I have a a lot of good cards, but mm. I w also want to tuck cards for yeah. the. Uh, I know, don't know the Italian eagle. I don't know the Benali yes, eagle. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I was struggling for okay, which cards do I keep? And but yeah, of course I, I had a lot of choice, so that made it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of you picked that up. I think what was it, turn four or turn five? And when we saw that, we thought, oh, that's that's going to be so <laughs> nice, so nice to play that later in the game, but. Yeah, um, it is. It is always <laughs> tricky to to kind of find the right birds. I think particularly with a wood duck when you're when you're maybe not drawing so many birds every turn. But um, yeah, and yeah. also with the end of round cards yes. and my bonus cards, it yes. it was a struggle. Where do I focus on? It was. It was. But I think it was. I think it was well managed. All in all, so um, thank yeah, you. Congratulations for that. And we will come to Kip now. So commiserations, obviously. But um, yeah, you know, I think there were some good combos in there. I think you you managed to get the wagtail which we were kind of curious whether that was going to go down or not um, but you did manage to get a couple of birds out of that so um, yeah you know what we what's your take on that game yeah congratulations uh, Yellowhammer um, no like you say I, I, I felt like I had quite a few good cards and I didn't get to use most of them to their mm. strongest advantage in the end um, but um yeah, there were a few moments where I was like, "Oh, <clears throat> that's it for me." Uh, um, when when Yellowhammer picked up the the European goldfinch, when I had tuck, yes. uh, tucking birds everywhere, I was like, "Okay, yeah. so those are worthless now." <laughs> uh, and then the pink power went down, the golden eye, while I was developing mostly my grasslands. Yeah. Um, so he countered me really well, and uh, I had to really search for points, and I'm glad I made it above eighty. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. Those kind of pink powers came down at the right time. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, we talked about this kind of briefly before the game is, um, you know, sometimes the right bird kind of comes up just when you need it. And I think that you got the white stalk and then it was sort of one or two turns later um, that Franklin's girl appears as well to, to go with the tucking bird. So I think it was a nice setup in the in the grasslands. But um, yeah, I mean, it is it is so difficult, I think, to, to compete with her. With the wood duck, and particularly when it was when it was executed as well as it was by Yellowhammer. So um, yeah, I think that was a that was a very entertaining match. That was a good good one to watch. So uh, I think we will probably call it a day there. But thank you uh, again to both of our players. That was a, that was a good match to watch. So I appreciate you taking the time to be part of the stream. Uh, and as well, thank you to to Groovenstein for joining me today on this live stream we have another one later so i will see you again in a few hours i think it is and uh yeah, yeah. and hopefully Thanks as well having us on here yeah, yeah no, it no was problem. nice no problem looking yeah. forward to listening back and absolutely uh, improving where i can yes yeah. no doubt <laughs> thanks plan and the groove stein and also it was a nice match uh, so uh thank you yeah, kids yeah good stuff all right and uh of course thank you to the viewers who tuned in and like i said we do have another stream later today so please do check that out and uh, hopefully we will see you all again later today.